lot of energy in the office right oh, now. Oh, there's something going on. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm, I'm Paul. Mike Delicio. I'm waiting for Z to finish. I feel rather collected myself, Mike. I feel calm. Do you feel cool? No, I'm not falling into this whatever joke you're trying Game to make. Game cool dog. He's collected. Um, cool and collected, man. I know. I'm not working for you. What's, and your bad jokes. What's happening right here? <laughs> That's my main. I have aged right. overnight. Uh, because I'm a grandfather now. Mm, Woo! You can tell. And <laughs> okay, so folks, welcome to the Dice Tower. We are going to be talking today about games that we've cooled on. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, a list, basically. We liked or really liked, and, and all mine, all these games, I really liked them. In fact, six of my ten have been in my top ten in the past. Try to top that there, Mike. Not impossible. All of mine are currently in my top ten. <laughs> 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 they were the top ten you did they this year. They were the top year. ten that I did this year, yes. That's no, fine. but, so, I like them less, and none of them I would say I dislike now. But there's been a tremendous drop for various reasons. Yes, correct. Yeah, That's kind of where I'm at. I don't hate any of these I'll games. I'll play all these, almost. Yeah, I'm kind of There's only you. one, let me see, only one of these that would make me vomit. Oh. The rest I can stomach. <laughs> okay. No, no, some of these I actually still like, but they had really large drops. Yeah. You know, like, not in the top ten. Many of these are not even in my top 500 anymore. Yeah, yeah. My number 10 is Castor Oil the Game. Mm. My mother mm. gave me Castor Oil when I was a kid. Watch out. Back up. You better have a really long arm when you're feeding them that Castor Oil because uh, you got a surprise coming. <laughs> Comes back up? <laughs> no! I, don't know. I was able you to keep it down. What's wrong I with you? Know. The Castor Oil, it makes you, uh, you know. Okay, let's move on. Castor Oil. Is that what we're talking about? Let's move on. <laughs> Here we go. This is the... <laughs> I don't know what's happening also, with the top Google 10 list. Also, Syrup of Ipecac. That's we're hit number 10. My number 10 is uh, <laughs> my number 10 is a game that I still oh, respect. You know, there are certain games that you're like, I really respect this design. I think it's, you know, a really brilliant design, but it's just not one that I want to play anymore. And I think part of it is kind of how I've changed as a gamer. This is a game mm -hmm. that I, uh, one of the earlier games, crazy enough, because it's heavy. This is Dominant Species. Ooh. Um, so I still respect this design tremendously, you know, and, and uh, I still love the theme, which is what really drew me into this in the first place. I got into this game, again, relatively early in my gaming uh, hobby career. And um, when worker placement was still even kind of novel to me, and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. and, and kind of the order of operations was very novel to me. But now it's at a point where... Now you you want miniatures. Well, no, no, it's not even about that. Of course, the look of it is not the best, but that's not what keeps me from playing it. What keeps me from playing it is, A, the length. It's so tremendously long. Um, and if I'm going to play a worker placement game, it's probably not going to be one that is quite this long. And also, yes. the constant kind of reevaluation of who is dominant in a particular right. area, that, that, that kind of constant arithmetic that you're doing, it's, it's, it just is not really what I tend to look for in games now. But again really have a lot of respect for the design and the importance that this game still has in the hobby, I think. It's a it's, very well-liked game. It is. It's just not one that I find myself wanting to play. It's just like, if someone asked me, I'd be like, you know, I tell you, probably not. It's just, it's too long. It's too much upkeep of, you know. You know, I didn't think of this one, but this... This could be in my list in a yeah. sense because I remember people ask me all the time, like, your review is so glowing. And it was. Yeah. I was like amazed. It was amazing. But I keep coming back to the four hours, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. there's a lot going on. And you could also, I've learned as time goes by, you could get two and a half hours in and go, oh, I'm not going to win. Yes, at 100%. All. Yeah. And there's other games I feel that give some, I'm not going to say, Many other games combined. Sure, sure, I don't sure. want someone to be like, what's the name the game? <laughs> name the game. Many other games give me that similar feel. Yeah. The new one is actually... I haven't played Marine. The new one is better, I think. Mm -hmm. It's close. I still love the theme, and I still love the asymmetry of, you know, playing as a particular, you yeah. know, type of species. But, uh, yeah, it's just not one that I want to play much anymore, unfortunately. Mm. That's my number 10, Dominant Species. 
My number 10 is a game I very much like. It is my 10 because it's the one I guess I've, I've cooled on the least. That's sort of how I arranged mm, these. Yeah, same here. Um, <clears throat> but it just basically got squeezed out by two other very similar games that will always supersede it mm. at this point, and that is Imperial Settlers. Imperial oh, Settlers. coming in hot. Wow. On the cool list, coming in hot. Imperial ah, Settlers wow. lives right now, for me personally, mm -hmm. in this uncomfortable position between Empires of the North and 51st yeah. State. One retains the theme, but reworked a lot of the mechanisms. The other one has a really cool theme, distinct from this uh, setting, a little, you know, Empire setting. Mechanically, it's it's different enough. I, mean, I, I do think that somebody could be comfortable owning both and playing both, but it does hit a lot of the same parts of my brain. Mm. So I find myself, I found myself, I should say, the more I brought this out, finding flaws or having them become more glaring because I have more things to very much directly compare them to. Sure, sure. So, yeah, I just sort of got squeezed out in between those two other games. I will go for one of those two, which are, are superb games. Not to say this one isn't. I just think if you have those other options, especially if you own them already, which I did, this is going to... This is going to get pushed out. And in fact, it did get pushed out. Mm. It doesn't really surprise me because yeah. it was a reworking of 51st State, but then 51st State Reverse took all the good stuff that, came yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's an interesting idea where games that kind of iterate on themselves to get pushed out. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Yeah. so there you go. That's my number 10, Imperial Settlers. Mm. So I have some like classics at the beginning of the my, my 10 going up. Uh, there's some more modern... Where I was even more grandiose, but this the, my first one was a game I played to death. So that's part of the reason I cooled on it, and I've changed as a gamer. That's another reason I cooled on it, and many other games do it better now. But for a while, this was hot, 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 and that's Bang. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, okay. I really loved Bang when it first came out. It kind of blew my mind. Not just that there was two teams mm -hmm. and hidden people. But that one person was like, there was a third renegade there yeah. trying to kill everybody. And it took a concept that I was very familiar with, like the take that, play cards on other people. This this one for me is the closest to, like, I'm just not going to play it. <laughs> right. I'm not going to play it because there are, like, 20 social deduction games out there now. Right. And, and you'd probably I don't have the to count over there, range right? on my yeah, weapons. Huh? Oh, and the dice. Yeah, of course, there's the dice game, too. But yeah. I got to give Bang a lot of credence, though. I mm. mean, when it came out, it was so neat and cool. It was one of the few games that you could play. Uh, when Bang came out, it was Werewolf or Bang. There <laughs> wasn't a lot of other options. This yeah. was before Resistance, before all that stuff. And I really liked it a lot. I mean, I remember this was the first game I ever played at a convention. Yeah. My first convention Origins got to, and they were playing Bang. And I was like, I know this game. Let's do it. And it was exciting. Sure. And a lot of good memories, but it's really dropped. That take that without any real recourse. Mm. Um, they added a ton of expansions to it, none of which really changed the game, right. yeah. I think, for the better. So it was good, but it's... It's a little bit of a product of its time, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, and so I guess... This is the closest I'm going to get to do that because I could also be like, well, I loved Uno as a child. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Sure. I'm only including games of modern era, which Bang is one of, uh -huh. although it is 20 years old now. It's pretty old. If it's from 1997 or, or it's lower, vintage. it's vintage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I've learned. Uh -huh. All right, anyway, my number 10, Bang! Mm. My number nine is uh, another game that, again, I still feel like it has kind of a, a, a place of importance uh, in the hobby, at least to my uh, to my mind. And a quick interrupt here. Yeah. I think there will be only one crossover. Period. Wow. Yeah, I don't anticipate a lot of crossovers. One crossover. At most. I think I'm going to have one with I'm, you, Tom, and yes. that's literally it. I'm no, not. That, that, that's what I think. I think we have the same game. I think. And I think you and I <clears> might <throat> have a different one that we cross over on. Although I think it's only if you thought of it. Oh, okay. Well, oh, wow. Wow. No, no, no. <laughs> wow. Only if you were smart enough for once. That's not what I'm saying. There's a lot of games in the world, Garcia. No! My number nine 
<laughs> calm, cool, and collected. That's right. Which one was I? Cool. You were, I was no, calm. You, you were collected. Were, he was playing live. My, my number nine is Dead of Winter. Um, oh yeah. This is a game that I feel like. It has a it, it has a shelf life. I guess that's the only way I can put it. Certain Do you games, feel vindicated here? No, no. I I understand that this game makes a makes an impression, doesn't it? It does. And and I will tell you, the first maybe five to six games of this right. were so good. I get like that. so good, um, especially because I played it with the same group, and and mm -hmm. so you start to kind of create little metas and stuff, and yeah. it just was like. This was a game that was an event game. We all looked forward to it. We, we scheduled it. It's like, we're going to play Dead of Winter. And we were all yeah. stoked. We loved it. Um, then over time, we just found that some of the kind of magic, the, 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 the novelty of the crossroad cards kind of mm -hmm. go, fades a little bit. The repetitive, repetitiveness of what you're doing kind of comes to the fore a little bit. The different scenarios... All are kind of variations on a theme, really, mm -hmm. for the most part. I mean, and and again, this is a game I would still play under the right circumstances, but I would probably rather not play this anymore. I feel like I'm done with it now, if that makes sense. Still appreciate it as a design, still does some neat things, but it doesn't have that wow factor <clears throat> that it did for me the first, you know, few years that I played it. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, again, Dead of Winter is a game that I, I still think the theme is great, and I still think that uh, it does have its charms, but I think I'm done playing it at this point. So that is my number nine, Dead of Winter. <laughs> All right. My number nine is uh, a game that Tom and probably several others were quite surprised I liked. And yes, I've cooled on it a little bit. This is Merv. The heart. Oh! Yes! <laughs> yes! So BM is dead. Stop! I'm sorry. BM. Before Merv and after. We used to say. Oh, oh, oh. BM. oh You don't yeah, remember yeah, that yeah, joke? Yeah, yeah, when we, Z came. Okay. This so was starting to pan down. It was, yes. Z shows up and sucks so Merv, and we're like, what happened to you? Why, why you were locked in quarantine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden he's a Euro gamer. It's I've always liked Euros. This, this is a crazy thing to say to me. Here's the reason I've cooled on it, actually. Mm. It's not really even the game play. Okay. Last time I played this, I had a good time. This is one of those games, and it's not a particularly expansive list, but this is one of those games I dread teaching. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I get like, that. Like, straight up dread it. This mm. is a game, if somebody said, how about that Merv game? I'd be like, okay, tomorrow we can play. I need to go get the rule book, go home, study. <laughs> yes. Watch a couple videos. Yeah. It's just a bear to teach. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of moving parts, and they're interesting, and I like what's going on. But boy, I would much rather not teach you. You know, it's just one of those things. So, well, yes. Chris wants to play. Chris is in 100%. So, you got to teach Chris now. Ah, uh, crap. <laughs> All Chris right. and Camilla, you uh -huh. can teach them Merv. Do we have one in the library? I need to borrow it today. Of course, today. we got in the library. Borrow the rule book, study it, mm -hmm. maybe watch a couple of videos. Maybe this video <laughs> to remind me. <laughs> Don't make mistakes again. Mm -hmm. Wait, have me? you ever watched your own video to learn, to remember the rule to a game? Yeah, me too. I have as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, anyway, Merv, my number nine. My number nine was, I believe, was on the list the last time we did it. That was called Top Ten Turkeys or something back then. <laughs> um, uh, this is a game that's out because I've changed as a gamer. I no longer like these unforgiving type games. Mm. And also there's like three or four games that have replaced it. And that's Age of Steam. Oh. This was in my top ten. Okay. Wow, really? I really... I, I, this When I first played this, it blew my mind because it was... We use this word a lot, but Age of Steam is elegant. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the only so many actions. Right. I mean, you look at that board. <laughs> that elegance personified right there. Mm. Mm. I can see the species from here. Chef's kiss. But as, <laughs> but as you play it, like you're like, wow, every action matters. Everything yeah. is strategic. There's there's a little bit of luck the way the cubes come out, but it, you're just it it blows your your mind. But then Steam, right? Railways Tycoon. I was like, wow, Railways of the World or yeah, Ray, yeah. Railways, railways Tycoon, world. whatever. I can do the same thing on a bigger map, but I don't feel as stressed when I'm done. Right, right, right. And some of the things like the more income you get, the there's that income reduction that happens every turn, and that feels like a dated mechanism at this point. A little bit, yeah. Mm. Um, also, the look. 
and I know there's a new version out there and everything, yeah. but this is this is, I guess. This is the second one on the list, so there's two, that I probably won't ever play this again. Well, the game, I think. It ran out of steam for you, Tom, is the issue. Is the problem you had with this one is it ran out of steam. Chris, That's the problem. Chris is just with giggling wherever he is. Uh, but I like Age of Steam <laughs> a lot. I, I mean, I had a lot of good plays of it. There's a lot of maps for it. Yeah. But I feel that it's time for me is over. There's a lot of other train games out there. I'm yeah. discovering that wide world, and this is just, I'm done. I only played this one time, and it uh, the gameplay felt on rails. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! Right yes! Rails. All right, my number eight is a game that I still love the theme. Um, and... I guess the main issue I had with the game is still there, and I was hoping almost for a reprint where they kind of worked on the issues that, component issues that it has. My number eight is Ex Libris. Mm -hmm. This is a game that I have been Good dissuaded from playing it because of component issues. Sure. As odd as that sounds. No. You can see it right there, the tiny, tiny, tiny text. Which yeah. is critical. On these, on these tiles. This is a game I feel like I would play more if it was more usable. <laughs> and I kept thinking, look, this is, it had a bit of buzz when it came out. They'll right. reprint this. They'll fix those very clear and well-established issues. No, instead they'll, they'll print a different game about With a the mystical same library. Theme <laughs> and a different game. And so this is one that I feel like it's a, it's a missed opportunity because I don't play it because I find it a pain in the neck to play, like it almost works against itself. And and so I just wish this is one that they would, you know, maybe do I something agree. about. Because this game shall remain shelved. It there you go. That's right. It stays on the shelf because it has them, some of my them. issues. So it's not it's not a problem with the design, it's a problem with the production and I wish it got addressed. I would maybe give it another shot, but it's not in my collection anymore because I didn't want it. It is in the Dice Tower Library yeah. still, yeah. but I have I hope no one asked me to teach it. Right. Yeah, same thing for me. I like that. I thought there was a lot of interesting stuff going on, but you're right. Usability on those tiles. Mm -hmm. And that's really it. It's the yeah. one issue. But it's a huge issue. <laughs> but it's a big, it's, a, it's an every turn, every mm -hmm. player turn issue, knowing what those abilities do. It's just yeah. a worker placement game. You need to know what happens when you go there. Right. Yeah, I agree. And they keep cycling out. There's new ones that come in, and they all have a different power, all yeah. have a different thing. So you're constantly having to read those tiles. Yeah. So It's a shame. It's a missed <laughs> opportunity. It's a, it's a fine game, but... Not worth the effort at this point. It's a it's a fine print, but uh, <laughs> that one doesn't uh, work. Wow, yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> it doesn't work at all. Uh, my number eight. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you were supposed to go like shh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> shush. Uh, keep it down in here. Uh, my number eight is uh, one that I was. <sighs> I played a lot of it, and I think. Uh, the rules are part of the problem here, but also just set up and sort of the procedural nature of the game, mm. how much there is, and I have a lot of it. Legends of Andor is what I'm talking about Ooh. here. Legends of Andor is a game I still own, I still respect is a good word for mm -hmm. this one. Good, because we keep giving you all these expansions. That's that right. Come. Well, there haven't been any in a long time. There's one in the front room. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go learn Merv first. Uh, but the game is, there's a lot going on in this game. This is the kind of game that you're thinking, ooh, adventure. Ra, 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 I'll be the dwarf. Well, hold on. Slow your roll there. You need to read the stack of cards and go through all these steps. And then when you hit this, read card B2. Uh, go to B3. Now pause, play a little bit. Then when you hit that step, read card C. It is very much a sort of scripted idea. It works pretty well in this game. And then you add in a second box as big as the first with a lot more stuff. Then you do it again a third time. It's a lot. It's a daunting game. I think that's mm. what it is. If I set aside a, a, a day and I'm going to play Legends of Andor, I think I'm going to have a great time. But it takes that kind of forethought and yeah. commitment. And that's why I've cooled on it. It's just not coming out. I really like this one still. I think it's a cool game, but 
Yeah, it just it's a lot of setup. There's a lot of baggies <laughs> in that box. Yeah. That are like three tokens <laughs> for one scenario for one dude that sits on a tower over here. Yeah. It's that kind of thing. So my number eight, Legends of Andor. Mm. That's how I'm saying it now. Eric Summer would be happy with my number eight. Oh no. Oh. How dare you, sir? My number eight is Citadels. Wow. Now, here, the thing about Citadels is I remember, this is one of those game experiences I remember the first time we played it. Yeah. And I went to a game cafe in Korea. We sat down and played it, and I was like, again. <laughs> we played it. I was like, again. Yeah. You know, I was just ready to keep. And I played it many, many times. And I still, this is what I would still play now. Mm. I just feel like the, the brilliance of Citadels, and I think it is a brilliant game. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But now, again, we've seen this stuff used in more fulfilling games. Yes. And it is possible. I disagree with Eric. He thinks it's a bad game because you can get hit by the assassin multiple times. Right now, part of that is bad play on Eric's part. <laughs> if you, you won't watch this. Get um, but, but also, there's ways to mitigate that. Now, you can even take the assassin out of the game. Because sure, sure. almost every copy now of Citadels comes with multiple things to put in there. Right. Yes, right. But it's just that I play Citadels and I go... I could play Mission Red Planet, right. you know, right, which right. is, I think, a superior, more fulfilling game. Citadels, again, has that thing where you can play with a lot of people, but I don't want to. Mm. No, no, no. You don't really want to go too crazy with the player count. Right. And then and then everyone always says, you maybe you should play with less than eight buildings. Then just put it in the rules at this point, you know, mm-hmm. and they, they could have. I don't know. It just I like it. I almost put Fist of Dragonstones here, too. Mm. Um, I Actually... I almost put Bruno Fadudi's picture. <laughs> no, no joke. Wow. But it used to be like if you said Bruno Fadudi made a yeah. game, I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've cooled on Bruno. We're no longer dating. Oh. Um, we don't. No, there right. you go. I was waiting. I didn't do it. Uh, I stopped. I, I chewed uh, on my tongue. I just said we don't. Mm-hmm. Anyhow. Come on, you gotta say it. No. You have to sing it. Once you're done talking about this, <laughs> go ahead. Anyhow. I really still enjoy the game. I think it's fun. It's a great introductory game to many things, but I'm I'm not as excited about it at all anymore. Who made this game? <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about it. Okay, all right. yeah, that's fantastic. All right, Tom, you've mentioned, you've said a phrase a couple of times today that we fits. We don't talk about that. Not that one. Oh, okay. Uh, that fits many of the choices, and this is the first one, I think, that fits this. Which Vintage. Is, no, I've changed as a gamer, okay? Or maybe I've learned more about what I like and don't like as a gamer. Sure. Because some of these games were ones that were some of the first ones I played, and I was, like, so excited. Oh, this is something new. This is something different. My number seven is Seasons. Um, and I've learned that many of the things that this game does are just not things that I particularly like as a gamer. Mm-hmm. CCGs, actually, because that's what right. I feel. Right, that it has a very CCG feel, this kind of Collectible like, card game. Collectible card game where you are basically at the beginning of the game drafting cards for the whole game. Right. And that is just not what I like as a gamer. It doesn't make it a bad game. It, mean, it makes it a game that I don't particularly enjoy. But I do remember that when I first played it, I was so taken with so many things. You know, the the, the production of the game is is beautiful, and then and the way the dice work, and then the the resource management, and, and those things were new to me. And so it was kind of like I was excited about the process. But now I've learned that I find games like this tedious. Um, this is this is a I game. I still that, like this one. Yeah, a lot of people still like it. Um, and again, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm saying it's a bad game for me. It's not the type of game that I enjoy. Thus, I have cooled on it. Um, I would not get, say it's a bad game, but it's not a game that I choose to want to play. It just is not what I enjoy in gaming. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I'm more of a tactical gamer. This is a very, you know, you, you have to basically plan out what you want to do at the very beginning for the whole game. Um, that's just not what I enjoy. So Seasons is a game that, again, I think it's a fine game. It's just not one for me. I haven't played Seasons since around when it came out. Yeah. I don't know. I liked it okay. It seemed like everybody around me liked it more than I did, and mm. I just never played it again. Yeah. I wonder if I'd like it. Trying it again now, you know what I mean? It's been so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder. wonder. That's one I might have to come back around to. Yeah, apparently I'm tedious. That's fantastic. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. Uh, My number seven is a game called Lewis and Clark, The Expedition. (laughs) 
Yes! Yes? No, yes? Wait, this is this is the normal game, right? Yeah. 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 Yes. This is the one you thought Come was Come to my over? side. I'm oh. coming to your side. No, I never liked this game. Okay, then that's for that. You <laughs> said come to your side. You did. Deal with that. Okay. I will be speaking to Q. H you. Whatever. H yeah, you're you're flustered now. <laughs> yes, yes. The vapors. The vapors. <laughs> Lewis and Clark. I did declare. Uh, the main reason I've cooled on this one is uh Everdell. Actually. Oh, interesting. I find them very similar in play experience. They're both about putting workers out on the board okay. yes. or playing cards for stuff. Interesting. I would have never thought of this in comparison with Everdell. I just find them very similar in feel. I know this is a race. Yeah. Technically, you're racing. Mm. You're moving down the victory point track very slowly. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's really what it is. Mm. But I find that on your turn, you it's either a worker placement game or a card manipulation game, mm -hmm. or a card play game. Yeah. And that's the main dichotomy there. It's two things mushed together. It is, yeah. I find Everdell does a lot of the same things. On this turn, I am going to place a worker. Oh no, you went where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I do you don't, and I go there and I collect something. Or, I play a card. So I find those two halves mushed together. Yeah. The games are not, uh, you know, not direct replacements for one another. And I might be an outlier here, but I find them very similar. And I just like Everdell better. It's very Which is why I've cooled on this. Okay. Okay. It's also, again, there's a lot of issues with the game that I have always felt. And when you play other stuff that you do like and is similar, i.e. Everdell, then they become more prevalent. Things mm -hmm. like it doesn't scale well. I don't want to play with more than two. Yeah. And I could play Everdell with three. I could yeah. play with four, whatever. Um, it's kind of long. It's... Uh, all those things, just all that stuff. I like the theme in Everdell a lot. I love the artwork and the cute critters and all the things going on in that game. So, hmm. yeah, it's... I applaud your bravery. It's a little bit of a narrow sort of path to cooling on something. No, I don't but think that's, so. I get it. Like anything, I'm picking the one best answer or yeah. the, the one best reason. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of other sure. reasons, but I'm going to focus on the one biggest one whenever possible. My number seven, Lewis and Clark, The Expedition. This could have been on my list, too, for different reasons, but it could have been on my list as well. I mean, I, I don't Indication. dislike it, but I never find myself wanting to play it. All right. Yeah, it's not that I dislike it. Yeah. Again, I don't actually dislike any of these. All right. that uh, Ralphing stuff at the beginning was in jest. <laughs> mm -hmm. I shouldn't well, you say have to ingest before ingest you Ralph. Yeah, yeah. All right, my number seven. Mike, I was wrong. <laughs> Oh, we cool. have a crossover. Wow, already? already? Well, and also it happened like five seconds after I said I won't have any crossovers with Mike, and then he said Dead of Winter. And I was wow. like, oh, okay. That does feel winter. like to be so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Mike. Be like Mike if I can be anyway, like Anyway, uh, yeah. Man, the first time I played this, it just blew me away. Right. And it really is a great experience. It is. And you could talk me into playing it. Mm -hmm. I... It's long. It is long, yeah. The Crossroads thing is awesome, and I'm still really disappointed that I haven't seen it in more games, but they finally did it better, I thought, in the um, Forgotten, Forgotten, Waters. Waters. Forgotten Waters game. Yeah, with the app. Right? And then every once in a while in this game, you just have a terrible game. Yeah. And while I thought the idea of personal objectives <clears throat> is a neat one, I am slowly coming around to Z's side on this. Because... Yes, come to my side. Mm. No, no. Come on. Oh. Come on. Don't. <laughs> um, I'll get you yet, my pretty. <laughs> no, but... Yeah, you know, it's just... Sometimes it's game-breaking. Mm -hmm. And then... I don't know. I just wish there was a reason to... do things in a game that you want to do just for... Thematic reasons, but not for gameplay reasons. Right. That was compelling enough for me to be like, yeah, okay, I'll let myself go just so you can have a better game or whatever. Right. If I'm hoarding food cans, oh, I'm hoarding cans of food. Mm -hmm. Whether you all die to zombies or not, if that's what I need to do, what the game is telling me to do, I'm going to do that. Right. And someone said in the comments that I hate semi-co-ops and it's a semi-co-op. That's true, but I always looked at it as... And again, it's maybe it's me. I played the game as I have total victory, 
Yeah. Regular victory, right. which means the group won, but I didn't complete my personal objective, so technically I lose, but in my head I'm like, oh, but we won. Sure, right? sure, so I, sure. That's, that's my reasoning that away. Is that an actual thing in the rules, though? Do you remember? I don't I think so. Don't no, 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 no. You yeah. straight up lose. But you, I, you lose, I would yeah. at least be like, well, I lost, but it's kind of like the guy who like dies, but the rest of the expedition makes it. You're like, right. go! That guy's, that guy's a Remember sucker, me. okay? <laughs> and other people are saying play it as a pure co-op. You could, but that's not the game. Yeah, the, yeah, the, right. And if you do play it as a pure co-op, I think it takes away some of the aspect it, it of does. it. It does. It really does. But all, and also that that. What's it? The winter die, frostbite die. What's it called? The, oh, the, yeah, the, the devil die. The, the exposure, exposure die. die. Sometimes you just want to stay. Yeah, it is it is brutal. I it's, mean, it's really brutal. and it's, it's supposed to be thematic, but it also just it, it feels crushing. It, it always feels Sometimes. Crushing. So, yeah. again, I think I would play this mm -hmm. yeah. once in a while. Yeah. But I've really cooled on it. Dead of Winter. All right, my number six is a game that I think you still like, uh, Z. Uh, how, how could you, you fool? You're about to see. I You're about say, to see. Uh, I wouldn't say I dislike it, but it's just like I would never choose this over other games that do similar things. Okay. And this is Quadropolis. Oh, I really, really like Quadropolis. But what other game yeah. does Quadropolis other than Meadow? Meadow? <laughs> he said, said other than, sir. Do you not well, understand the question? See, that's just one aspect of Quadropolis. That's the place a thing to go down a grid and get that. You I know agree. What I mean? The rest so of it's build a little the city. Rest of it, the rest of it is build a city. And, and you're, it's so funny because it does the things that you say you hate, which is like be thinking about, evaluate what this building is and to find scoring around it. I do hate that. Um, Except in two games, I don't mind it. Yeah. This is one of them. Right, right. This game that is, is weird to me. Yeah, still. this game is fine. Right, like I, this is not one that I would say I won't play it, but it's just I would never choose this. This is just one that I see it on the shelf and I'm just like, meh. You I still I mean? like it. I yeah. like it. Yeah, I like yeah, it. I think too. I like Meadow better. I definitely like Meadow like a lot better for that for that mechanism uh, it, by itself. I but. do too. I do too like Meadow better. Not uh, not doesn't blow this game away, make mm -hmm. me forget it, but. You're right that that part is just a mechanism that right. the, the game isn't doesn't about feel that. like it's about that. That's just a, a, a clever action selection type of a thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess I also have realized, and I don't want to, you know, kind of get ahead of myself too much, but I, I realize that maybe these kind of city building games are I amazing. I don't like them as much as, or there's like a very specific types that I like. You know what I mean? They're very specific types. <laughs> And this is one well, that I'm just kind of converting people over to anti-city games. No, 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 I'm not. Like, there are others like you know, Foundations of Rome. Like that, that just is like that hits my wheelhouse more than something like this. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, that's clearly a city building game. That's what I'm saying. That's a version of a city builder that I enjoy more than something like All this. All right. All right. That's my number six, Quadropolis. Let's talk about building things. Mm. My number six is Takenoko. Oh, wow. This is so sad. No go. Which version? The $300 version? No, no. Um, I have played. Have I played that? I haven't played it. I've seen it. I've never played that. That's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I like it, but it's ridiculous. It is very ridiculous. Takenoko is a. I think I've cooled on it because I have no place into which to slot this game. See, yeah. I thought. At one point, I thought, this is a great introductory game. Mm -hmm. It turned out this was a horrible introductory <laughs> game. How do I know that? I tried to introduce it to some people. Mm -hmm. uh, is it because of the die? It is the die. I think a big part is the I die. I think so. I'm, like, I'm teaching the, the game, and I'm like, oh, irrigation, the irrigation, yeah. irrigation and the die are the right. two things that if they were removed from this game, I think the game would be a much more just streamlined, interesting, punchy kind of game. Yeah. And yet, it's so lucky, and it's sort of, so, you know, you draw the goal and see if you make, the, make that pattern, or if you already made it, or that it can't all, then it doesn't feel like it justifies the reason to do all this, like, well, I have to irrigate in this pattern, yeah. I gotta put water here and here, and, oh, I have an extra action this round, oh, and the rain comes in, and the panda runs, and so, yeah, it unfortunately, I've cooled on it because of those nitpicky details that mm. the game forces upon you that I just the more I play the more I feel like man I just wish they would remove this stuff yeah. I wish I could ignore this stuff and then the game would go smoothly I still again don't dislike the game I'm just saying I find myself thinking these thoughts 
and have cooled on it. <laughs> what do you use? You all... keep looking at me. Well, I'm trying to figure out why you're looking all smug over here. No, no, it's not. It's exactly the opposite of smug. It's like I want to disagree with you, but I, 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 I can't. I just, I'm, I still find this game so charming. But you're absolutely right. It is charming. Right. You're absolutely right. It's. Not... I agree. It's a tough one. It is. I taught it to some people a couple years ago, and I was like, man. This dies a pain in the neck to teach. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, and well, not that I forgot. I kind of like underestimated how much there was to teach. Yeah, when also, I tried it. One of the cards is harder than the other two. I don't remember which one. Oh, as far as with the objective cards? Yes. Yeah, the the easiest are the pandas. The easiest are the pandas. The hardest is probably the the gardener. The gardener's the, the hardest, gardener's hardest one because you need a pattern present on the board. Right, and and if it has a pre-printed tile on it, or if it has. Oh, a, I forgot about the three special tiles. The special tiles they have to be in there, and it has to be irrigated. Yes, like yeah. one the panda can't eat from. Right, right. One is already irrigated, even if it's not connected to the canal. So you're right. like, hold on. Right. I thought it had to have water next to it. Yeah, there are a lot of exceptions for a game. I still like the game a lot, but I, I definitely too. understand what this you're is, saying. Yeah. If this got the Seven Wonders uh, Architects. Architects treatment, mm -hmm. I'd be all over it. Yeah. Ooh. He could do that, too. He could do it. It's the same guy. Takanoko, <laughs> you could do a... Antoine Baza, you've been called out! <laughs> Where's my Takanoko Duel? Mm. Like, Takanoko Duel. Okay, no, it's Takanoko. Takanoko Duel. Duello. Yeah. And one du is one is a panda, right? right. A bloodthirsty, <laughs> demon-possessed mm. panda. The other one, a frail, feeble <laughs> farmer. <laughs> that was good alliteration. Uh, the frail, feeble, the feeble farmer. The frail, feeble, FFF. All right, here mm -hmm. we go. My number six. I'm going to cheat here for real briefly. Okay. And I'm going to cheat because there's a game I forgot, and I saw it mentioned in chat. So oh. this is where I would put it. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. This okay. Because in a game I forgot, is Sentinels of the Multiverse. Oh, I never liked that to begin with. Right. I liked it a lot. I've cooled on it. I, the app is better. And other superhero games exist. Silly me, this is where I would have put it. Okay. Instead, I put sure. a game that's very similar to my number seven, Dead of Winter. Mm -hmm. But I've cooled even harder on this one, okay. which is why it's number six. Oh, I know. Last night on Earth. No, Battlestar Galactica. Oh. Oh. In your face, Roy! This is unfathomable. And it has nothing to do with, with Unfathomable mm -hmm. at all. In fact, I think I like Battlestar Galactica better than Unfathomable. Okay. Um, again, there's... I love the theme of Battlestar Galactica. I, I mean, I came playing to play this right from the TV show. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I know the characters. All that stuff's cool. And I'm even cutting out all the expansions, which added so much extra for yeah. very little payoff. Um, my problem with Battlestar Galactica is, again, it feels like a really long social deduction game these mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. And there are so many shorter ones that give me the exact same feel, like other what? than the theme. You did it to me. I was gonna do it to you. You don't have to. I was kidding. No, no, no. I can, I can list those. I mean, I think Resistance is, is faster than Battlestar Galactica. Well, faster? You think it gives you the same experience? I think it does. Interesting. Okay. I'll say Good Cop, Bad Cop gives me the same experience Ooh. as Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. Again, trying to figure out who a hidden person is and stuff. I like that concept. I Shadows Over Camelot has actually stayed up in one of my favorites. Okay. Battlestar has fallen because it's so long. Yeah. And. It has things like that sideline card, and you're like, oh, what do I do when I reveal myself, but I can't look at the card? Right, right, right. You know, stuff like that. Mm. Also, I, really, I was very blown away that they did not take the opportunity to streamline it more when yeah. they did Unfathomable. I was because, not especially to... because the trend is clearly to trend lighter, shorter, to make this kind of game, social deduction games, Burst of fun, punchy, quick, get together at the game cafe and knock it out in 30 minutes. I was very blown away that they didn't take the opportunity to go Cthulhu, right. Battlestar Galactica, boom, we're going to go short. We're going to hit hit an hour, hour and a half. Wasn't there such a thing as a BSG Express, like it was like a homebrew thing? Is yeah, they, they turned that into Dark Moon. That's right, Dark Moon. But yeah, I actually think Dark good. Moon is not at... Dark Moon, that's the Canizia game. Dark Moon, Dark Moon City. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I didn't like Dark Moon that much. Dark Moon feels forced. Yeah. So again, I've had some amazing experiences playing yeah. this game. Mm. And you could talk me into it probably, although I would be like, oh, we're playing base game, right? Yeah. You know, we're... <laughs> Yeah, We're playing yeah. with people who know how to play. Right. There's a lot uh, of whatever. You know. There's a, a, some caveats in there, but mm, it just—it's really fallen down for me. Mm. So, Battles of Galactica. <laughs> All right. 
My number five is uh, in that same bucket of games that I've had here on this list, which are, I've realized I'm not this type of a gamer. This just is not a game for me. And this Fun to play with. No. Young. Jeez. No. <laughs> Gramps. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying. I can't even make you the old jokes anymore. anymore. Ah! Invalid. My number five is Quarriers. This oh, is, wow. Yeah. I haven't thought about this game in, right. a, in, a, in a breath or two. Jeez. I remember when, when I, again, when I was new to the hobby, I was very into this game. And Look I at was, all those dice hour yes. awards on this box. And I was interested in the, the, the expansions oh. and the new dice. And then I came to realize I don't like deck building. I really, I, I really don't like deck building in this form that much. You mean dice building? Dice building, yeah, but it's the same, the same kind oh, of you don't like Dominion? Dominion is okay. I say this why is why I've got to be... No, no, I've got to be careful. <laughs> don't spoil the no, man's no, 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 no. list. It's, it's, it's using it to do this battling type of a thing is what I'm getting at. Okay. You see what I'm saying? It's, so you it's, don't like Dice Masters either? I, no, I don't like Dice Masters, but I didn't play Dice Masters much. This is what, the first of this type of game that I played. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. Hmm. And then I realized that I, I never wanted to, you know, I, I was like getting like more new stuff, new stuff. I got to keep up this new stuff. I don't, it, it was too much. It was too much. It was right. like. What, you want to play Quartifacts and. Um, no, yeah, it was like. for the Gladiator? Right, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. It was terrible. Yes, yes. Um, you know, and again, I just, I guess I realized that this is not the type of game that I tend to like. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When, when I was first in the hobby, I didn't really know. I was trying to figure things out, and I, you know, I was like, I had fun with it the first few times I played it, and then I found out that I started to get really tired of it really quickly. Um, so, I don't know. It's, again, it's not... It's not deck building. It's deck building for the purpose of this kind of battling where you're having to kind of like keep track of all these different powers that you're kind of drafting, and that just doesn't work for me. So. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? For me, this is also cooled a bit. I mean, first, I mean, uh, Dice, Dice Masters, Masters did that. Is why this cooled. But it's also, when I first played this, I was like, bag building. Mm -hmm. What a neat idea. Yeah. Rolling dice. The. The actual game of Quarriers, take out the buying and all the special powers, right. the actual game where you attack people and That's, stuff is not particularly a fascinating game. It's not. But it was first. Remember, right. you want to be first or best. Well, it's not best. It was first. And now that we've seen a lot of other games, it's hard to go back. That's, it sounds I, like you're saying you want to be best then. Or first. Yeah. Sounds like best comes along and whoops you. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, and I'm glad you articulated that because I was struggling to articulate mm. what it is. But it really is that that core thing of the procedural element of how That's you attack each other. That's why I don't. You probably don't never like played the the quest for the client. I hate that title. <laughs> the quest expansion. I don't know that I did. It yeah. gave you another thing to do with your dice, mm. and it really wrapped up the game. But it was kind of late in the cycle. Yeah. So yeah, you, yeah. again, you never played it, so you're never right. going to probably. Right, right, right. It's too little, too quaint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. I'll be here uh, in a, for another 20 minutes. Um, all right, where are we at? Number five is a victim of its own success for me, I think, Ooh. because of the extra iterations have, pandemic, all, been, pandemic, pandemic, have pandemic. all been a little bit better. Zombicide, Black Plague, uh, calm down, guys. It ain't gonna be pandemic, okay? <laughs> Zombicide, Black Plague. I this was the final, and then I make it sound more final than that. But the 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 last thing that happened that made me sort of take that final, you know, a final little drop for it was I was reading the rule book that they posted for the Marvel Zombicide thing yeah. online. And every two paragraphs, I would find a rule that I would go, oh, that's better than Black Plague. Mm. Literally, like every at least one's a page, every two a page. Oh, that's a better rule than the way Black Plague does it. Yeah. And they've had, because they've had so many iterations, Black Plague is starting to show its age. They've added a little thing here and another thing there, and there are now so many rules that I just find dated. Like noise. The noise rule is just dated, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things in this game that now feel they've been iterated upon to the point of making this or large parts of this feel obsolete. It's funny. If there was some sort of up update yeah. kit or something, maybe, but yeah, it feels old. It's funny because I felt like Black Plague was kind of like the first refreshing of this system. Yeah, it was. You know, because it was the first one, if I remember right, that had those player boards that came with it, and that kind of helped so. with stuff. Oh, my word. It, it was a... 
It was a I big change. And I, and I, I wasn't particularly a big fan of Zombie Side. Right. I played this and I was like, oh, this is much better. Me too. This, I agree. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree with all of that. I'm yeah. just saying, this has now been a few years, or right. at least a few iterations. So they've yeah, had yeah. Space and Western right. and. Uh, and the Living Dead, which is the best version. But had you, had, had you played Zombie Side before you played Black Plague? Like, the, like, I almost wonder why you didn't have that as your choice. I don't choice. think so. No. Oh, maybe that's No, why. I think this was the first. We, this we, was the we, first one. I was, Got we it. somehow persuaded Z to play this. I remember. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, it was right really, on 24-hour marathon, I think. Is that right? Yeah. yeah I, mean, I do like it, I, and I still do like it. I'm mm -hmm. just saying, now it feels, for lack of a better word, vintage. Yeah. <laughs> I got it in there. Vintage. Mm. My number five will never be a crossover with Z, because he has never put this game on any of his lists and has never played it. But Mike played it for the first time. Which could be my last time I've played the game, but I, I might play it in the future. And that's Twilight Imperium. This was also oh, in my top ten. Wow. And okay. So this one is a hard one for me so to, to kind of clarify. Like, there's not many games that have taken the place of this. Okay. Because it's hard to find a... You're not going to get a 4X game in under an hour, Tom. <laughs> I mean, or, or at about an hour. Yeah. Look, I like Last Light a lot, but Last Light and Twilight Imperium <laughs> don't feel anything alike, really. They really They're both don't. in space. But, like, Twilight Imperium, you feel like you're building an empire. Right. Um, that Last Light does not feel like that. It has a different feel to it. Sure. I don't feel like I'm building an empire. I feel like I'm sending out ships and things. Mm -hmm. TI4, with all the... Man, it's 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 grandiose, and I like it, but every time I play it, I, I, I feel exhausted. Right. And I cool on that feeling. When are we going to play this? <laughs> he's like, yeah, we're like, I'm like, I, and I'll never play it again. So he's like, I'm ready. Oh, you're done. Oh well. <laughs> if only they could turn this into a sixty-five dollar rolling right. I now, now we're talking. Now, now you've got my attention. Talk. Look who's talking. But here's the thing. I might play it again. Yeah. But it's it's definitely one of those. We got to set the day up, and mm -hmm. it was fun. It's exciting. Yeah. But I can't just pull this game out and play it. At a con, I sit there and think I could play like four other games oh during this time frame. It's kind of best when you play with people who played it before. Right. Or everyone hasn't played it before because then it's like sure. a learning experience and it's fun. And the mix is tough. Yes. Um, hmm. But I have a lot of respect for this game. It was in my top ten. Or Twilight Imperium. Third, three, three was in my top yeah. ten. But yeah, I just kind of cooled on this. And it's not just that it's long, although length does have something to do with it. This is the last time I'll mention length, I think. Mm. Did um, you find fourth better than third? Would sure, you... but fourth, Twilight Parent fourth is, is essentially. You, Roy, okay? <laughs> Twilight Parent fourth edition is stay over there TI 3.5 for sure. Okay. The, the, the difference between three and four, like if you play three, you, I'd be like, you know how to play four. We'll teach you the minor differences. Yeah. That, it really is that. Yeah, this is one where I'm, I, I'm I, I legitimately feel like I'm really, really glad I played that, and I don't ever need to you play You got to play? Yeah. I want to play. No one ever invites me to play. You know, literally, the video has you in We it. have receipts. <laughs> <laughs> I've kept the email chain. Oh, I've released it to the Senate no, subcommittee. No, like, my God. Um, Mr. Garcia, <laughs> did you or did you not get an email? Is that your signature? <laughs> Remember, sir, you are under oath. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. My number four is a game that I have cooled on for a couple of reasons. Um, one of them is because I have found other pure solitaire games that I like much, much more. And another reason is that a, an app came along that takes away some of the... It's better as an app, but I still don't even love the app that much. And this is One Deck Dungeon. This is a game that when it first came out, I was pretty excited about it. I played it quite a bit. I even played the, I think it's called Forest of Shadows, the, the standalone second uh, version of this game. Okay. Um, but I found that, first of all, when the app came out, I'm like, okay, well, I'd rather just play the app than, than have to kind of deal with, you know, setting it up and the cards and all the dice and all the stuff. But then I also just started to play other dice-driven, especially solo games that I like a lot more. The, 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 there's, I felt like, there was not as much mitigation in this as I would like. You know, I don't mind luck in games at all, but I like to feel like I've got a little more agency than this game uh, gives me. This is one where I probably would not choose to play again because, again, it's a solo game, essentially. I think you can play a cooperative, but um, 
I'm just not going to choose this as a solo game anymore. I'm going to pick other games over this. Um, I thought it to be interesting, but at the end, it just felt so lucky. And you're yeah. right. I felt like I couldn't mitigate the dice. You played this too? I played only the app. Yeah. Solitaire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a solo game. It, but at the end, like, you get to these final fights. Yeah. And you roll the dice, and you're like, yeah, or, oh, yeah, oh. And there's nothing you really can do about it. Yeah. Also, the pseudo I'm going into the this dungeon door that door, was yeah. so fake of a mm -hmm. choice. Mm -hmm. Like, which of these four cards? You're like, I will pick this one. Oh, the wrong choice. Well, you had no reasoning to know yeah, yeah, what's yeah, where. Yeah, right. There's just doors. So. so just put them in a stack then, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, this is one that when it came out, I played it quite a bit. But now I just don't think I want to play it anymore. I think I'm done with it, I yeah. suppose, is where yeah. I'm at. That's my number four, One Deck Dungeon. All right. My number four is Evolution. Oof. Evolution has had a lot of um, additions, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. It's been, this game has just come out and come out again and come out with expansions, and the expansions by themselves have come out. And I liked it. Originally, I really did enjoy it. I thought it was a very clever, engaging game. I honestly never got this whole it really simulates the world, doesn't it? And they were like quoting a biologist or something yeah. on the box. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> calm down. I get that some animals eat other animals and you want to have a lot of animals to be protected from one solitary hunter. But, you know, I'm not splicing DNA over here. <laughs> but I've After definitely... I played Evolution, I decided to, to get a degree in. Yeah, yeah right? I, I tested out of three college courses <laughs> <laughs> they don't. You don't uh, have to. Like, no. I played Evolution. They're like, oh, oh six pardon credits. me. Can you six teach a credit class? Hours. <laughs> so, yeah, the game was interesting, but I definitely cooled on it. I think I just started to enjoy the play less. I don't know how else mm -hmm. to put it. And this is one that, not through no fault of any other game, it's just the more I played it. So the you more haven't I played Oceans? <sighs> I think I. I don't think I did. Mm. Because I think I, and a copy of it came in, and I don't think I ever did. I looked through it, and I'm like, gosh, it still feels like no, no, evolution. Right. I and I was, at that point, so cooled on it, I was uninspired to try it. Yeah. It became the choices in it, and what was going on started to lose its flavor. And it started to become a, a binary choice of, like, meat eater? Not. Mm -hmm. It just became so important. Yeah. Whether you decided to, to go carnivore or not carnivore, everything else felt like fluff around that yeah. central choice. The more I played, the more that felt true. I'd be like, do I go carnivore or not? No, everybody's kind of big. So I'll give this moron over here a long <laughs> neck or something. <laughs> and then eventually. Long neck moron. I can't tell you how many times I've won with that strategy. And then the eventually it's like, strategy. oh, they're kind Guys, of weak over don't there. Don't my chat for nicknames. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't on my list because I didn't really like this to begin with. Yeah, yeah this never really I did. I like it, it but I, I like Oceans better. But mm. it's also like Evolution 1.3. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, there you go. My number four is an entire genre of games. Oh my. And I can do this. Did we just green out for a second? I can oh, do yeah, this did, because... We? Um, yeah, we're, we're looking super we're green. We're looking super green. <laughs> uh, oh, it's coming up. No, <laughs> because this was actually in my top ten, this entire genre of games. And I realized this on Sunday because we were playing another one of it, and I was like, these are really starting to fall for me, and that's Escape Room Games. Wow. wow. Yeah, Tom. Now, Now, don't get me wrong. I just gave the Unlock Kids game a 10 out of 10. Yeah, That's yeah. fantastic yeah. for kids. Yeah, yeah. And I still will play the new Unlocks, but I'll tell you, the Exit games, the Escape Room in a Box, I have so many of these. Are, I have a pile at home. I pull them out, and I play them, and I'm like, oh, this is that. This mm -hmm. is that. Get out the paper. Measure this with a compass. Right. And it feels like that the, these, these games have... The like exit games in particular, they've reached their their they, limit. They've got a They're limit. like, um, look on the back of the box. Look on the packaging that the box is in. Uh, right. That that the box that you got shipped from, it's in there. It's on the UPS truck. You know, yeah. <laughs> hold up the shrink wrap to the light. Right. Yeah. And they're really starting. They're because. An escape room itself only has so much. I've heard people who go like hundreds will go, oh yeah, once you go in, I know that puzzle, I know that puzzle. That's kind of where I'm at with these. I'm not even claiming to be good. I can say, oh, I know what this puzzle I've is. I've seen it before. Now i got to figure out how to do it, though. Sure, sure. Yeah. And some of them still will get me excited, especially if they have some three-dimensional aspect. Right. But if it's a pile of papers and there's a pens and paper, 
I'll, I'm still doing these. Yeah. This is, but they really dropped. It used to be we got an escape room game in. I took it home and we played it that night. Yeah, yeah. Now I looked and I was like, wow, that one's been sitting there for four months. We played one on Sunday. This is past Sunday. Me and my daughters, and it was fine. Yeah. But when it was done, I was like. Yeah, these just don't get me as excited as they used to. It's funny, you were saying this, and I was thinking, well, maybe it's because it's a more limited design space than, like, traditional Euro games. But then I thought better. I'm like, no, I don't know if escape room games have a more limited design space than, like, worker placement or set collection or other. It's just that these types of games tend to rely on showing you something you haven't seen before. No, That's no, no, the like, hook. In a it lot is a more limited design space because when you do it, you're done. Well, that's if true. If you play a, no, a, a no, but worker placement game, there might be 50 different things I can do. I, I get that. Um, but I, guess, I guess what I'm saying is, is that the, the, the hook of these games is surprise. Yeah. It's showing you something you haven't seen before. And so you're to the point where you're, you're like, oh, I kind of know this is just a riff on this type of a puzzle. This right. is just a riff Turn on that Turn it upside type. down. Read right. it backwards. Yeah. Turn it sideways. Yeah. Do those two things fit together? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you kind of have yeah. this thing you go through, and it's right. not as exciting that first time that you do something, and, you, and you're and you like, that's awesome. Right. It's not as awesome the second time, and it, I feel bad for the designer. I'm like, oh, you thought that, you know, by putting those numbers close together, I wouldn't notice that they also made a letter. Right. Uh, yeah, I've seen it before. Mm -hmm. sure. that, I'm trying not to spoil anything yeah, in particular yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. But, that's kind um, of the point. Uh, thank you, Danny, yeah. for the super chat, thank by you. the way. Thank um, you. Yeah, so again, I still like these, mm -hmm. and I still will play an Unlock, I think, as fast as they come out. Okay. Because the Unlock is the one of the series which I feel is trying to push it, and also because it uses an app, yeah. they can do things. But even they fall. Yeah. But the Exit games and all, I mean, there's a lot of these. Dexcape. It has definitely calmed down. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. definitely not yeah. as many of them. It was yeah. certainly a fad. But it feels like I was part of that fad. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, escape from games are amazing, amazing. What's next? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I maybe feel that, a little guilty about that. Yeah. yeah, maybe they weren't quite expecting anybody to play all of it. Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah, that might be the problem. So that's also part of it is the fact that you should, you've played so many. You have a, a repository of mechanisms yeah. and ways in which they try to trick you and surprise you. Now, sometimes one still stands out. Like, I just played that Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, the box one. Box one. And mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, that was something different. Right. And even that one had a you a couple things. And you, there was so, like one thing of it, we're not going to spoil that, you did not like. I forget what it was, but yes. It's oh, something oh, to do with I, the, yes. the time. Time was a terrible, yes, yes, terrible, yes, yes. terrible, yes. terrible, <laughs> terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so Escape Room Games, my number four. Mm. My number three is a game that, uh, and I need to be specific, it has been released in a second edition that I have not played. Okay. I don't know, you'll be able to tell me, because you have both played the new edition, I'm almost sure. So you're talking about Uno and the second edition Dos? That's correct. <laughs> Um, Still waiting no, for Trace. SpongeBob Uno. Um, Return of Uno. My number three is a game that I've cooled on for a couple of reasons. One, I feel like it is way too long for what it is. And two, the setup and teardown is just such a bear, and that is Rum and Bones. Um, mm. But I have only played, and that's why I specifically chose the first edition cover here. Now, there is a second tied edition. Second I don't edition know if it changes it a lot. Okay, well, I can't speak to that. Um, my main issue with it now, again, is that it takes too long to set up all of these pieces, which essentially are mindless drones that you push forward. You would still have the same problem. Yeah, and I and, agree. And, and I felt like it's too long for what it is. And and to me, the, the main beef, thank you for the super chat. Um, the main hook of this game is your captains, right? Yes. Zach, you weirs. Or your cat. The captain's only one of the different kinds, right, exactly. but I know the big guys, the, the main big, guys. The big guys, yes, yeah, you, you know what I mean. Um, that to so me like is where deck, the interest... Not deck hands, the, you know, gunner yeah, or Yeah, exactly, whatever. the ones that have the special powers, right? right Otherwise, it's a moment. You're pushing them forward, thing, right. and, and I just felt like it got to the point where it was arduous to take this off the... the sh oh, okay, here we go. Set it all up, okay, where, who's going where? It just, it seemed like it was so much, it felt like it would be much better as an app. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so I just was like, the theme is great. The look of it is great. The components are great. I used to play it with with my youngest son, and, and we really enjoyed that. But I was the one that had to, you know, take care of all the setting up and tearing it down. And so it was just like a chore after a while. And that's why I've cooled on it. I don't disagree with you. And in fact, this is the only instance where it might be better 
if all the deckhands mm -hmm. were a token on the board. I agree. And there were just the token that said four, yep. three, two, or remove one or remove it, whatever. Yeah. Because yeah. they just march That's all down is. a specified path. Yes. And the board would be a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. You just can't walk in there because there's dudes in sure, there. Sure. Um But yes, I agree with you. The 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 MOBA part of this game, the deck hands, or I think that's what they're called. I think you're right. Yeah. And they're just sort of shuffling towards each other. The is minions. this game's irrigation? Yeah. It, I do remember the first thing. time I played it, I thought, this is so stupid. Why would this happen? And they're like, it's MOBA. I'm like, what's MOBA? Right. I was very out of it. I didn't yeah. know anything about it. I still don't get why that excites people. The second edition really ramped up the three people you have that ran around. Yeah. And I, or the five, you switch them in and out. Yeah. I thought that was right. exciting. I like the second edition a lot. But I do agree with you. You're like, this is a lot of setup for a two-player game. Right. And where, just some like, woo, kind of game. Right. Yeah. Where most but of I the still pieces, like it a lot. Most of the pieces on the board are just moving forward. They're autonomous, they right? Are. That's really what that's. I that. agree. So there you go. That's Somebody uh, hit me up with those tokens that replace them. That's right. Yeah. That he, might work. Man, might. If, I had, if I had those tokens, I could have. I just got rid of a ton of the expansions, which you took one. Yeah. No, don't tell me what I did. <laughs> Especially if you wanted to keep, if you wanted to keep it still looking kind of blingy, because it's a very impressive production. You could do like like acrylic tokens, or you know what I mean. That's interesting. I could have, I could have fit all the expansions in the box. And You're right. I still have it. I just Too I just added it to the Dice Tower mm. Library. It was a hard one to fit in because I had this. It was. It's a typical Simon production. I'm like, whoa, but I still like it. Okay. It, would, it might. It might actually be better. If that's mm -hmm. one instance in which miniatures work against you. I agree. You try to go in there and they fall over, yeah. or you're shoving them into a little square. Yep. Yeah. All right. What do you got, Z? Oh, it's me. I'm so caught mm. up in this uh, rubbing bone stuff. Mm -hmm. Number three for me is Legendary Encounters Alien. Oh. The Alien one. This Someone is, just called that. Is that chat? Is Someone said Marvel Legendary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I Marvel that. Legendary I was never super into. I, I love it. I I'm never quite cool that much of it, but I liked this one a lot. And then I have Predator also. But okay. a Predator and this kind of you could you could mix them and it was a whole thing. This these games got way too complicated for their own good. Sorting this thing, figuring out the different kinds of cards and setting it up and the whole thing was trying to just simply do too much with what could have been a fun, engaging, deck building y sort of alien game. Playing through the movies, that was cool, you know, picking the characters, going through the movies. But it just yeah, I just cooled on it because it was a lot of setup. Mm -hmm. That that rum and bones thing where you have to organize everything and set it up. The game's a little long, so the more I played, the more I started to feel that um, bother me a little bit more each time. And then I think I hurt myself a little bit by getting Predator mm. and putting them in the same box. Alien vs. Uh, Predator, yeah. Yeah, because that was the thing. They yeah. came up with the Predator one and they came up with the Alien right. one separately. But there were rules where you could mix them. Sure. And so I had made dividers for the cards and the whole thing, but then playing and setting up everything and the mode you wanted to play, and you could have one, you could have humans versus either ones, but you could also be predators against aliens mm. or something. Yeah. Oh, uh, the bones, you could, I could hear the bones breaking <laughs> under the weight of this game's everything. Yeah. And I just cooled on, and I let that I let that go. Um, so yeah, Legendary Encounters, an alien deck building game. Mm. My number three. All right, my number three is the newest addition to the list. Um, oh, oh so I play I play games with my kids a lot, and I'm always playing new stuff. Bring home new stuff, sure. and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. The kids are like not always thrilled about that. <laughs> so I was like, all right. We're going to play one of my favorite games. You guys are going <laughs> to love this game. Mm -hmm. I love it. We played it. And when it was done, I was like, what do you think? And Well, we, we didn't finish it because it's a very, very long game. And they were like, ah, it was okay. And I was like, yeah, you're right. It was okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> because so many games have taken what this game did, which was phenomenal, and are doing it in a better, more streamlined way. And this game is Seventh Continent. Oh. I love Seventh Continent. Wow. But I'm telling you, for example, Destinies, which just came out. On Destinies, every tile I go to, I'm like, ooh, look at this interesting thing. Ooh, look at this. And Seventh Continent, I forgot. You can go like six tiles, and you're like, look at the trees. Look, it's a mountain. Yeah. 
Oh, and I was like, when does the exciting stuff happen? It does. Okay, seventh content has some really cool stuff. But wow, you have to get to it. And there's a lot of setup. And there's yes. a lot of, you're bleeding for no reason at all. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's neat. It was like a groundbreaking game. And I'm certainly still very excited about Seventh Citadel that's coming out. Because I'm assuming they're going to streamline some of Well, maybe they won't. Are they? You know. But mm -hmm. I like this idea of going out and exploring. But I found with Seventh Continent, a lot of times you explore and you're like, more sand. Yeah. You know, and that's, and Destiny's. I was even in the most boring, and Destiny's is a few very boring scenarios, right. but you, there's a lot of exciting things. You'd yeah, be like, look at this, I talked to this right? guy. It's about like yeah. pressing it all into yeah. a pretty small board. You could spend three hours going through a cave just to learn, don't go in that cave. And that's another th problem with Seventh Continent that has been very exasperated for me, is that you are doing this curse, mm -hmm. and you are going somewhere, and the game says, you can go anywhere. <laughs> but you and shouldn't like, go certain cool, places. Let's go here. Cross the, we can get on a raft, great. We cross to another continent. We go, and after a while you're like, did we make a left at the very <laughs> beginning but we should have made it right? And the answer is yes. Yes, you should have. And yeah. that's that's frankly not good game design. It is not. It's exciting, mm -hmm. and so I've learned to play Seventh Continent in the sense of, we're just gonna play till we finish it. Right. I'm not, we're not gonna lose. But I can see how people can get irritated at that, and it cooled for me. I'll still play Seventh Continent, I still like it. But wow, I was, I'm just like, huh. This isn't yeah. hold up, and it hasn't even been out that long. But right. again, sometimes something can be too sandboxy. Sure. Yeah. I actually am not a big fan of sandbox games for that very reason. Mm. It's not a key, a buzzword that excites me. Mm. It really isn't. That idea of like sandbox video games, yes, absolutely. But a sandbox board game, especially when there's a right answer. Like that? Well, video games have a waypoint, right? Yeah. They're like, go here. I want to find a thing or whatever. I can, if I can go off the, the path you're telling me to go on, great. Right. But if I don't know what the path is at all and I just make my own with no other direction, that yeah. could happen, yeah, where you just sort of feel directionless. I mean, you, you don't know what to do. You fly into the sun or something like a moron. I never loved Seventh Continent, but I always felt like it did the exploration thing really well. What did I miss? No, I felt like it did the exploration thing really well, and then I played Sleeping Gods. I'm like, oh, this does the exploration You're thing right. really well. And, and that's another, a thousand times better. That's another game in Sleeping Gods. Every single place you go to is exciting. It's exciting. Every single one. And like, there's not a right answer or a wrong answer in that game. And Seventh Continent, True. I just was like, oh my word, we found another abandoned hut. <laughs> we found footprints. We're like, what do those footprints mean? We never find out. Right, right, it's right. like watching the second last episode of Lost yeah. again and again and again and again. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You don't watch the last episode of Lost because then you realize they're never going to explain anything to you and it ruins the entire series. So you never watch the last one. Oh, I'm so saying. mad about Lost still. Okay. It was a good final episode, but didn't answer 800 questions. All right, well, it's going to be I okay. I like completion. All It'll right. It'll be okay. Seventh Continent. My number two is the game that surprised me the most because when compiling this list, I went through my collection on BGG. I always assumed that I didn't particularly like this game, and then I looked that I had rated it an eight. Like so currently was rated an eight. Right. So when I the first game, I, the first game I did played, it, I, I did. Oh, the first game you. I played, um, I had I, I rated it an eight. And now I think I would probably rate it like a four or five. I don't particularly want to play this oh, that's game. A huge drop. The huge drop. I've cooled on this game, um, and oh, this yeah. is another city building type game. This is between two cities. Never played it. I don't want you to wouldn't play like it. I know you wouldn't like it. Game. I just don't want to play it. It's like you're doing what it says. Basically, you're building two cities consecutively, mm -hmm. and there's the the hook is that you're going to score the, the 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 highest scoring building, you know, between you and the person, whichever one of your two buildings. Oh, you, between the, two, two cities. cities. The lower of your cities is your two. score. Thank you. The lower. See, between I've already forgotten two Canizias. Yeah, I just. I, I, I the, like I said, I thought I always wasn't a fan of this, and then I looked. And I'm like, I must have liked it the first time I've played it, mm -hmm. and then every time I've played it since, and I have not played it in a while because I've just the last couple times I'm just like, man, I just do I'm not. I'm actually like over this, game. this mechanism. Yes, that's also I, true. If you're working with two people, yeah. I found invariably, for some people, I've worked with some people in our game group who mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not doing that. You're doing it. Got it. Okay. Right. Right. right so that's right. not fun in one end, and then also. 
if I'm sitting between the two best players, yes. I'm winning. A hundred percent. It's just not that interesting. Right. Yeah. Or if you don't get you have a different play style with this person. Yes. You're like, oh. See, I think this is a game that has an interesting idea. Like, I think it's a very clever idea. I don't think that it works as well in practice as it does in theory. You know what I mean? They, I, I'm sure you can have good games. I know a lot of people like the game. But for me, I, other than that first game, apparently, which I still I can't even remember why I rated it an 8. But I haven't enjoyed it. And I'm just like, I don't want to play this anymore. I like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, but I feel the same way from when I'm yeah. beginning. It was, it's an okay city building game, which you wouldn't like because you don't like that sort of thing. No, no. But I, don't. I, I also don't think you would like that work with both people on the side. No, of it I hate working with people. There you go. It's not that. It's that you're. It's just a weird thing. It's just odd. You, yeah. You, you, like, you, do I see? Oh, you're doing really well over there. Well, then I'm, I'm going to sabotage this. It's, it's yeah. a weird concept if you think about it too hard. Right. I got you. I got you. Yeah. yeah. You're just. You're. You're. It's like. How dependent are you dependent upon other people to win? Like, are you winning because of what you're doing, or are you winning because of who you're sitting next to, or are you losing because of what you're doing? Or yeah, it's a weird. It mix. just is. You know, it doesn't. But feel you might like between two me. castles of magic. <laughs> nope. <laughs> No. Uh, yeah, yeah, I doubt it. I don't like any uh, of those. Maybe this is Z's number two also. Oh, it could Crossover. be. Crossover. It's not. I'm a little concerned because the game I thought I was crossing over with you hasn't happened yet, but it's my number one, so we'll find out. Oh, boy. Okay. Sure. We crossed over already. We're good. Yes, but not we the have one I one thought. At some point. All right, what's I your number two? I don't think this is it. My number two is Among the Stars. Oh. Ooh. Uh, I actually might. Uh, this, this wouldn't make my top ten, but I've cooled on this. For me, it's one reason only, though. Because that's of the of green? Oh, okay. Because you have to stinking sort those tiles. Well, I guess it only matters if you're playing with an expansion. That was a big problem. I backed this expansion on Kickstarter back in the day. But sorting it, it out a is a stuff pain. And prepping yeah. everything. This was basically another Seven Wonders type game. There were a lot. When Seven Wonders hit, there were a lot of games that were drafting games in which you were given a few cards and you would... Play one and pay, or discard one for three money. Almost always it was, in fact, three money. It was a very Dominion thing, where for some reason every deck building game had a hand of five. Yeah. Um, or six. What is it in Dominion? Five? Who cares? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? That game is... Oh, I'm, Dominion five. Five. And then, or you could do a couple of other things. The twist here was geometry mattered. Ooh, mm. You had to put things next to other things, right? Which Seven Wonders didn't do, and that was enough for when the game came out it just after time that concept died for me and i think the simplicity and the elegance of seven wonders kept that going this that is a game, game that when it came out i said oh i like this better than seven wonders and i've definitely changed back right yeah there's something about just the the clean design of something like seven wonders right. that you can come back to it a couple of years after you play last and go yeah, I can settle back into Fields this. of Green is a little cleaner. Okay, I was going to ask you, because I haven't played this. I've played Fields of Green. and even I've never I played like, Fields of Green, I guess. On. I never played that one, I think. Well, you have. You played Among the Stars. They're it's... not much different. Yeah. I just feel like it's a slightly cleaner system. I don't know how to explain it. Part of it, Among the Stars' graphic design is not particularly intuitive. I think that's a big part of why I cooled on it, actually. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at the pictures when I was putting my list together. The aliens are pretty bad. Just the artwork is bad, but the graphic design is kind of rough. Yeah. In fact, this I'm I might like this a little more, and I think it probably is due for a second edition, a cleaning up mm. of this game. Okay. Where they streamline it, clean it up. I could see this game doing okay right now on Kickstarter or something like that. Yeah, if it looked like radically different and it was clearly among the stars, second edition, unrelated pretty much to the first in look and whatever. Mm. But as it is right now, yeah, I'd get on board with that. I'd give it a shot. You know shot what I mean? Sure, it, it yeah. could, that could work. I mm -hmm. think it's a, the the time is is ripe for conquering the stars. Ooh. My number two among the Ooh. stars. My number two Come is on, my no. This is no way. This oh. is this is only on my list. Uh, this was my number one for Challenge several years. Me again, here we go. I already wrote Twilight Imperium now. <laughs> now, this is uh, Duel of Ages. Um, oh, I can't. Oh. Should I write that? No, I can't do it. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Look, Duel of Ages. So this for me is. The kind of game now, I, I, I thought about this. If Duel of Ages showed up, it would be a Kickstarter today. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm, right. And if this game showed up on Kickstarter, 
I would with you guys mock it. We would. I know I would. We would wreck this thing. <laughs> we would laugh that. about it. Six We'd be like, the Sunday. "Here's the thing, though. I love the theme of it. I still like the anachronistic thing mm -hmm. of moving around. But the hex thing, uh, the hex key, which was touted as this amazing thing, I've had some the most the best gaming experience in my life playing Dual Vages. I have. They, they've been really fun. Um, but I realized for Dual Vages to work, I need to have one person. Mm -hmm. who also is really invested in the experience. I'm running the whole thing because all these rules you got to keep in your head. Right. Yeah. And we're playing, we're having a great time, and one of those people who I played the game with has left my house, just had a baby today. Okay. That's okay. why my beard is gray. Okay. Um, but so she's not coming back to play this with me, no. and none of you want to play this with me. And I, I, I mean, look at that picture. It, it, I've just really, really cooled on this. Yeah. I also was really... As much as I like Duel of Ages 2, it's great in many ways, but the designer was like, let's make it more complicated. Let's yeah. add more stuff to it. And I saw his design notes on Duel of Ages 3, which is on BGG. <laughs> I found it. Oh, yeah, baby. And he's like, we're going to streamline it down. I'm looking at it like, you're not really. Mm -hmm. But it could be. Yeah. This oh, could be so great, this game. It could be. I really like it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, HeroScape was, uh, was a little bit closer to this thing, but I still, yeah. I still like HeroScape a lot. Yeah. Um, but Duel of Ages, I don't know that... This one I may never play again. I might, but mm. maybe my grandson. Might be time I'm like, to you want to play a game back from the olden times? Why would you do that to them? That's not okay. You don't You don't teach this to a grandson or a relative. I don't know how you did to the Melody. I don't know. Mm. No, this isn't Melody's... This was one of her favorite games, and I'm glad. And then she left. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidence? Not likely. I think not. Um, I've played Duel of Ages, the original one, and it was a terrible, terrible session. You did not play this with me. No, no. How did you? What made you play it? Then? I played it back at the local game store. You know, I did have a, a gaming life. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what persuaded you to play this it was i don't know it was on the table we were gonna play it i'm like all right let's play it i am a very uh well-rounded gamer mm. you better watch your mouth <laughs> <laughs> you come on hold it hold it go to the next one this was a list that i definitely spent a little more time with than some other ones that we've done uh, because a lot of times when you will suggest a list we're going to do there's like two or three that come to my mind right away for this list there was only one and it's my number one my this, number one was also the first one in my mind i'm think this is the one that i thought i might the, cross over my with number you on. one was not the first one that came to mind but when i saw it i You're was like, like oh right one i wrote <laughs> one next to it <laughs> my number one is a game that has cooled for me because of the expansion a hundred percent. We must have a crossover. Then. It's got to be. My number one is photosynthesis. Oh, no. No, it's garbage. <laughs> Although everything else you said was right. No, I get it. I also have cool in photosynthesis. Oh, my gosh. I, I really There's like There's two this reasons game. he's cool in photosynthesis. He won't tell you what. One is the expansion. Two is the person we played it with. <laughs> well, that, that's also true, actually. Because you you played it with someone if you, who was straight out mean. Yes, right. And you're like, oh, wow. When someone plays really mean in right. photosynthesis, it changes the game a lot. It does. My name is James. Right. So, so first of all, the expansion, <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there because I didn't review it. I think the expansion is terrible. It okay. is. It's terrible. I agree. It, it makes the game much more complex, which it didn't need, and fiddly and annoying. But you're right also in the sense that I knew even the first time I played the game, you can see it's a, it's a, 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 it can be a mean game. But it goes beyond being mean. It goes to the point of you can easily almost make the game miserable for other people, not even so that you win, just to be a jerk. I'm going to take that center spot. Right. I'm not going to move off that gonna spot. I'm just going to sit there. Um, you can really do some weird things in this yeah, game and just yeah. really trash other people. Right. Which is the way the game's made. It is. And I played like six, seven games before I met someone who did that. Right. And I was like, wow, this does not make the game as fun. I made more, yeah, played yeah, more yeah, of the yeah. six or seven games. And, and then, but you're right. But I was just like, oh my gosh. And now I'm to the point where I do not want to play this game okay. anymore. Okay. Okay. Um, and it's not because it's mean. Again, because I, I, you could you could play mean games. It's got area control. Of course, it's going to have some meanness to it. But I just the, the 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 combination of the really bad expansion that I think highlighted some elements of the game that I I really don't like. Playing with people that it put it in such a it was such a miserable experience. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't want to play it anymore. So that's my number one. Photosynthesis still very pretty. That's still good. Like the actually, I might have put this as my number ten. But I still, I still play photosynthesis. I, I haven't got pushed out of it. I yet. don't want to play it anymore. Yeah. 
I'm wow. Done. I'm done with it. Oh, I was part of that yeah. game. Was it me? It was not you. Oh, whew. It was me. It wouldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, my number one is uh, very similar to Mike's reasons there, but he said expansion. Mm. And you were waiting for the word expansions. Yes. I think we have a crossover here. We I have think to. we do, too. I wouldn't be mad if I didn't think. Time that. stories. Yeah, oh, for sure. See, I never really for loved sure. time stories. That's the thing. I didn't really like this time This was not even close. This one actually, <laughs> it's not, so this is both our number ones. Yeah, it's both of ours. This, this so uh, you can go watch it. I, st I, I occasionally go watch this. I don't normally watch our live plays. But the live play of the first time we played this, you can see the moment where Z and I figured out that first puzzle. Yeah. And we were just like, yes! That Sam was just was, sitting there, and we were just like, ah! Uh, I have never... I, that That's easily, for me, one of my top five gaming experiences was the, was the first play of Time Stories. Mm -hmm. It was so because fun. Because it was almost a revelation. The yeah. game was so distinct from anything else I'd played. It had this fun, story-driven thing without the rules overhead. Where yeah. you just look at a panorama and be like, I'm going to go talk to that guy. And, and it was a creepy... You just go there and read something mm -hmm. and be like... And then you could tell somebody else kind of what you saw but not read it verbatim. Sure. It, it felt like it bumped up against RPGs in a way and bumped up against storytelling in a way without rules almost. Mm. It was so clean. And then with the sci-fi thing over it too. And then you were like... Whoop, 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 whoop. And they would plug you back into that world, but now you'd been there already, so you knew some things. That concept alone still right. blows my mind. Mm -hmm. I liked it. And then the second one was, so was fine. Yeah. Then the third one, we, it, the second one, the first and second hint it, there's, there might be an overall story. Maybe. Yeah. And we're like, okay, maybe. Third one was like, this is the story. Right. And our minds were blown. It showed us cards from future games. Yeah. And we, future expansions. And it was like amazing. And then the fourth one was pretty solid. And then and they then, kept making them. Mm -hmm. And then you went to, for some reason, they thought people were begging to be part of the Manson murder <laughs> scene. Yeah. And that, and the ending is by far the worst ending of any game I've ever played. The ending of so like literally all the expansions we mean. Drink mm -hmm. more Ovaltine. Yeah. It's basically oh, what it was. Oh, my yeah. word. Okay, so then you're like, okay, fine. That was a terrible ending. It brought this game from a 10 down to a 6, maybe even a 5. But then they're like, oh, we're rebooting the system. Right, right. Okay, I played it again. I was like, you know what? The system's dead. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason I've said this before is escape room games. Yeah. Yeah. This suffers from that for sure. And but games they could like lean, Sleeping if they, Gods. Yeah. If they leaned into the story more, right. I think it works. They just couldn't shake some of those... Um, Sort of, you know, the, the, the logic of the, the path you're supposed to follow. They right. couldn't quite simplify that. Sure. They couldn't shake some of that feeling of, there's one stinking answer here, and you're going to make me loop 18 times yes. until I find it. Yes. If they were able to shake that, and, and, I don't know, open it up a little bit, make me, allow me to play around in your little sandbox, then it might be better. But you're right. They had two swings at this and messed it up And I'll tell times. you, part of it is, you watch a movie like Groundhog Day, or the day after tomorrow, whatever those movies are, um, and they show you the full first day. Mm -hmm. Then they show you the full second day, but things change. Right. Pretty soon they just show you like five seconds. Right, right, Because, right. But in reality, I'm thinking, man, Tom Cruise must have been really bored to go all the way up to that point again. <laughs> right. Yes. In time was. stories, you get the you whole thing. You the whole thing. And right. we were like straight up cheating after point. We're like, okay, we got back to this point again. Yeah. Because why would you want to go back and do that again? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially and when you do loop and loop and loop. I mean, we did. Sometimes we would just pretend we'd come up to a point and roll a die and be like, we failed. Next loop. And that was saving us yeah. 40 minutes each time? Yeah. It's sort of insane. Right. Yeah, it doesn't ah. work. I love the idea of it, and again, that first experience was good, but I didn't... Did they even make a second one of the new one? They announced it, but you I know what? I if they know. did, we I didn't, wouldn't play it. Yeah, we didn't pay That's attention. how much I, I cooled on this. I, I won't even go back and play the... I don't even know if I want to teach people the game anymore. Yeah. That, 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 like, if someone's like, hey, I want to play Time Stories, I'd be like, I'll teach you, but I don't want just, to play it. just get involved in this first scenario, because it's good. Yeah. And then pack there's it up. Few, there's mm -hmm. a few good ones. That's true. Early on, there were some really good ones. Yeah. 
And then also the novelty of what you sure. were getting was so neat. Right. But you're right. They lost yeah, the their Arctic way. the Arctic one did a really cool thing. Oh, fantastic thing. Early yeah. on in that scenario, there's a really cool twist. This isn't on my list because I came into this much later than you guys did. And I... And I thought I thought it was fine, you know, but I didn't have this big build up and then let down. You're you playing know? Seasons or something. Yeah. Well, maybe. And then when, the, when I played the new one, the reboot with you, I thought this is terrible. Okay, well there you go. Yeah. Terrible. All right. Well, let's take a look at what the people chose. Mm. So here are your top ten games, and again, you can often vote in our top tens by going to our website to check this out. So here we go. Number ten through whatever. Okay. I'm very Number ten, okay. dead of winner. So yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Nine is Machi Koro, which That's when I saw pick. that, That's a great I thought, pick. yeah. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I definitely called on that very Please. quickly. And when I added expansions, like like what happened to you with uh, photosynthesis, yeah. the expansions made this consistently worse it for did. me. It did. It did. Machi Koro two is better. Mm -hmm. It is. That, that will help. It is better. Eight Gloomhaven. Uh, maybe because of Jaws of the Lion? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Seven, Seven Wonders, which I thought was funny, it was number seven. Right. This one, I'm not sure what the thing is on seven. Seven Wonders Duel, Seven Wonders Architects, maybe. That could be. Yeah. Six yeah. is Wingspan, but that's only because Wingspan is on every people's I choice think, top ten. I think it's, yeah, I do. I, I think thought it was funny that some people thought we were going to pick it. I like Wingspan. No, I still, Wingspan is still in my top 50 for sure. I like it a lot, but I never went into it. Like, I didn't sit down and play it once and thought, declared it like the best game ever. Yeah. I warmed up to it. So cooling back down from it, if I was going to do that, would take a longer time. Yeah. All right, number five. What's number five? What could number five possibly be? I don't, I don't know. remember. All right. Here we go. Should you look at number five? Okay. Terraforming oh! Mars. Oh. I, some people thought I was going to say it because of Ark Nova, but I still think Terraforming Mars is fine. Sure. There, there's also a difference between straight up replacing right which is a little bit different like the only reason i'm not is because there's one new game mm -hmm. um yeah. i still like terraforming mars four is um i don't know what these are so you're gonna have to hit the button right uh oh scythe which is weird because outrageous i do like scythe a lot oh yeah i still love Scythe. number three hmm. pandemic z well but pandemic i get because people they got into the hobby probably yeah, played sure. it a ton and then they're like well i'd rather do something pandemic is a similar choice to like a dominion it's inspired right. a lot of stuff mm -hmm. oh is two dominion i think dominion might no, be splendor. in here though That's this one is interesting, interesting because point. when splendor came out it was played everywhere like at our game group it was played every single night and i have yet i haven't seen it played for years now well there's a there's a gaming meme of this game is the splendor killer and i think that's kind of what it's about mm -hmm. you know what i mean i think this is a, a result of that yeah, and number one, yeah. which did not surprise me at all, is sure. Catan. Sure. Oh, okay. And I get so this, this Dominion was a... didn't make it. I really mm -hmm. thought it might, actually. Catan is actually, would be on my short list. It would be, too. I would play Dominion over Catan. And Catan's the game that brought me into the I hobby. just don't want to say Catan. That almost feels punching down, if I, in a sense. Yeah, I agree. I think it's almost, yeah. It's vintage. It is vintage. Well, it is actually almost 30 years old now. It would have... It's uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, it would have the... What's the what are the what's the word for the cars that are forget it? Antique. Antique. It would have the antique plate. Yes. The blue plate. For you, for you, that still it feels Shh. contemporary. Oh geez. So Here we go. Grandpa. Here we go again. Here we go You're again. It, hey, today is a good day. Yes. I have a grandfather. That is, is exciting. You are. Um, so, hey, uh, again, we're not necessarily saying these games are bad. No. We cooled on them. If you're watching this later on, let us know what games have cooled for you in the comments. Again, our games. I I feel. Very much opposed to this idea that you said that game was great, and yeah. I no, people change. Yes, um, the, the clothing you wear, the music you listen to, right. the mm -hmm. foods you like, mm -hmm. we all change in these things. Yeah, one hundred percent. But these are the games. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Mike Delicio. Have fun, cooling down. It's Ooh. summertime.